What's good, everybody? In my video today, we're going to talk about slope and all the important things we need to know so that we can answer all slope questions. Starting off, we need to know the formula for slope. And typically, this is the formula we start off with. The change in y divided by the change in x. So what does that mean? This breaks down into y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, also known as the slope formula. But a lot of students, they refer to this as rise over run. So these are just some basics that we have to understand if we want to answer slope correctly. Now, there's two ways that we could identify slope. So the first method, we're going to talk about rise over run. So that means when I look at my first point here and my second point here, I'm going to see how many spaces that I go down and over. So we go down one, two, three. That's our rise. And then our run is one, two, and three. So just remember that slope is a fraction. Rise over run. And once we simplify, we'd have negative one. So what does a negative slope mean? That means that when we look at this line, as we're going down this line, it's going to be going downwards like some stairs. And later on in this video, I'm going to show you all the different kinds of slopes. The second method it is we could figure out the coordinates for each point. So when I look here, our first point is going to be 3, 0. And our second point is going to be 0, 3. So this is important now because we're going to use the slope formula and we're going to figure out if we could get the same answer for slope. So we're going to label this x2, y2, x1, y1. And all we have to do is make sure that we follow the order of the, the, order of the formula. Students make a mistake where they substitute incorrectly and that's what causes them to get this wrong. So we have 3 minus 0 over 0 minus 3. So we're going to get 3 over negative 3, right? And once we simplify our answer, we are going to get negative 1. Now, I know some of the students are going to say, hey, Peters, what happens if I do it the other way? So I do y1 minus y2 divided by x1 minus x2. That's okay. We definitely could do that. And I'm going to show you guys that we will get the same exact answer. When we look here now and we switch this around, we're going to have 0 minus 3 on top. And then on the bottom, we're going to have 3 minus 0. So this gives us negative 3 over 3. And once we simplify, we're still going to get the same exact answer. We're going to now talk about the four different kinds of slope. So we have a negative slope which is just a line that looks like we're going down some stairs. We have a positive slope, which is a line looking like we're going up some stairs, a slope of zero, and a slope where there, it's undefined, meaning we have no slope. So when we look at the positive slope, guys, just remember that we read our graphs from left to right. And once I set this formula up, similar to the negative slope, it doesn't matter whether we put x1 or y1 first. Once we follow the formula, we're going to get the same exact answer. So when we look at this right here, this is what we're going to get. And just an important rule of thumb, anytime you have a negative number and we're working with slope, just put it in parentheses so we can make sure that we actually have the right sign for our slope. So once we simplify this, we'll get 4 over 4, which is just 1. So this slope will always be positive, no matter which order we solve it in. When we go to our undefined slope, this means that the x's are going to be the same. So once we set this up, we're going to have 1 minus negative 2 divided by 4 minus 4. So once we simplify, we're going to get 3 over 0. Just remember, we can't divide a number by zero and get an answer. It's undefined. There's no value. So this is why we say undefined for a vertical line. 
Now, a lot of times students get confused with the vertical line and the horizontal. So the horizontal has a slope. It's just that the slope is zero. So once we go through and we solve, we're going to notice that our y values are going to be the same. So we're going to get a zero on the top half part of our fraction. We can divide, but our answer is just going to be zero. So when we look at this, there is no rise. It's just going to be a straight line forward. So these are the four different kinds of slope. So we're moving on to part three, guys. Part three, we're going to be talking about slope intercept formula. So that is the equation y is equal to mx plus b. So the way that we do this is we have to understand two things first. b is the y-intercept. m is going to be a slope. So typically what they do in these type of problems is they'll give us a slope and they'll tell us what the y-intercept is and they tell us to create an equation. All we have to do in this problem, guys, is more simple than you think, is let's substitute. So y stays the same. We substitute 2 thirds in for m. x stays the same. And then we substitute 7 for b. So this would be the equation. y is equal to negative, I mean, sorry, positive 2x plus 7. Now, if this was a negative, it would just be negative 2x plus 7. And if 7 was negative, then instead of plus 7, it would be minus 7. So this is the first situation, right? They just tell us what m is, tell us what b is, then they say to us, create the equation. Now, the second scenario is what we did earlier. So they're going to give us a line, and on the line, we're going to have to identify the y-intercept, right? So we know the y-intercept here, b is equal to 3. And then the second thing we have to do is go in, take, pick two points on the graph, luckily we already got two, and we're just going to go ahead and complete the slope formula. So now that I have both of those pieces of information, I just substitute it in. So our final answer for this problem would be y is equal to negative x plus 3. So this is how you guys would solve and create an equation for the line, given two points or just a slope and y in the cell. So now we're going to be talking about the standard form of an equation. So they'll give us something like this. 3x plus 4y is equal to c. And there's typically two things that they ask us to do. They are they're going to ask us to identify the x and y intercepts and to switch it into slope intercept form. So let's talk about slope intercept form. So we're trying to go from this equation to y is equal to mx plus b. How do we do that? I got you. So the first thing we need to understand is we want to get y by itself. And for us to get y by itself, we're going to need to move 3x. So we'll subtract 3x. And I'm sorry. This should be 12, guys. I apologize. I subtract 3x on both sides. Now what I'm left with is 4y is equal to, and guys, understand, just try to keep the x in front. That's a tip I always give students so you won't get confused. 3x plus 12. Now from here, we're going to get y by itself by dividing both 3x and 12. And once we do that, our final answer would be y is equal to negative 3 fourths x plus 3. So we know that the line should be slanting downwards like this. And our slope is negative 3 over 4. Y intercept is going to be 3. Now we're going to go over to our second situation, right? And just make sure you guys uh, simplify if you can at all. So in the second situation, when they give a standard form, they're going to ask us to identify the x and y intercept. So how are we going to do that? I'm going to show you right now. So with the same equation, 3x plus 4y is equal to 12. So typically what happens is the x and y intercepts are this. So the x, when we talk about the x intercept, the y value is 0. When we talk about the y-intercept, the x value is zero, okay? 
So when we're solving this mathematically, we're going to plug zero in for the other variable. So I make y zero. This basically goes away because it, it's zero. And we have 3x is equal to 12. Once I divide by 3, I'm going to get x is equal to 4. So what is the x-intercept? The x-intercept, remember, it's an ordered pair. So don't forget, guys, it's an ordered pair, so there should be, it's a point, right? It should be an x and a y value. So this is the x-intercept. Now, we do the same exact thing, but we're going to make the x variable 0. So in red now, we have 3 times 0 plus 4y is equal to 12. That x is gone. It's a 0. 4y is equal to 12. Once we divide by 4, we're going to get y is equal to 3. And just remember, this is the y coordinate, right? Y intercept, meaning x value is 0, y value is going to be 3. Moving on in the video now, guys, what we're looking at now is how to work with the point slope formula. And we use this in situations where they give us one point and a slope and they tell us to create a line, right? Or create the equation for a line, I should say. So this is what we have to do. We're going to take the x and the y and substitute it in where we see y1 and x1 and then substitute 2 for m. So we have y minus 1 is equal to 2 times x minus 4. Okay? So that's the first thing we have to do, guys. We have to substitute. Then from here, we're just going to distribute and solve. So in our next step, we should have 2x minus 8 after distributing 2 to x and negative 4. Combine our like terms because we have to get y by itself y is equal to 2x, and once we combine like terms, minus 7. I want to show you guys another problem where we don't know the slope. They don't give us the slope. What they do is they give us two points. So how are we going to exactly solve this? So what we're going to do is this. We need to know the slope first. That's the most important thing. We don't know slope. So let's go ahead and uh, figure out what our slope is right now. So once we figure out slope, we're going to set this up. So we're going to get 8 over negative 4. Always check to see if we can simplify the slope. We can. So we know m is equal to negative 2. So now that we have that, we can go on to the second part of the problem. And the second part now is to use the point slope formula. Okay, so let's start substituting. So we now have y minus, and understand guys, we can use any point, either this point or that point, does not matter. We will get the same exact answer. So I'm going to use the first point, right? So we have y minus 7. And this is equal to the slope, negative 2, times x, minus. And just remember, guys, x is negative, so let's put this in parentheses, okay? So that we won't get the signs wrong. So once we do this now, this 3 becomes positive. We're going to distribute, and we're going to get y minus 7 is equal to negative 2x minus 6. Even though 3 is positive, remember, 2 is negative. We combine our like terms by adding 7 on both sides. And once we do, we'll get y is equal to negative 2x plus 1. This is Mr. Peters. I hope you guys enjoyed our video today. Smash the like button for us on your way out. And thank you guys again for joining us on Algebra 1 with Mr. Peters.